Hello, hello. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to lecture number 28. Today we're going to be talking about portfolio tips for VizDev artists. But as usual, we need to wait for a little bit for all the Vikings to join. So, yeah. Okay, let's see how the sounds is. Okay, cool. All right, now I just have to do a Discord thingy. All right, do 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 do. Announcements. Everyone, let's go. Oh, oh. And meanwhile, I'll be drinking coffee. Hey, Marco. Hey, Julie. You're here. Hey, David. Hey, Dromato. Hey, Ring. Hey, Miroslav. See? Real warrior, Julie. She's been to the hospital, to the top of the mountain. She's been on the, on the brink of death. And still, she comes back. She comes back like a real warrior to finish what she started, which is the, the ultimate Viking training program of all times. <laughs> uh, hey, Yao. Hey, Lubov. Hey, Flying Pig. <laughs> I giggle all the time. Sveta, Boris, Naomi, Lena. CR, hey, what's up, broski? Hello, hello, hey, Max. Hey, Daramato. I think I said everybody. Hey, Felipe. Hey, Dima. What's up, Dima? Dima's a good friend of mine. Very good color key artist. Very nice, very nice guy. Hey, Jowies, how to make recruiters love you. Wink. <laughs> Not in that way, guys, come on. But we have to be a little bit clickbaity <laughs> with our titles. Uh, all right, we have two minutes till we start. Today is going to be a fun one. I have no idea how it's going to go, but um, I think there's going to be some valuable information for you, all of you guys. All right, let's see. By the way, how's my how's my voice? Is it good? Is it? Uh, can you hear it just fine? I hope you do. Today we're spamming Julie the Warrior. No, we we will be spamming be like Julie Warrior. Ju Warrior. Oh good? A very epic voice. I try. You know what? I wanna go into voice acting sometimes, maybe maybe it'll be good. I'm not really good at voice acting, but you know what the trailer? For this art camp, I voiced it. Of course, I had to lower it <laughs> in the program, but uh, yeah. Um, if you like that, that was my voice. All right, uh, why am I babbling? Why I'm not making a post on Instagram that we're live? By the way, position of a social media manager for Valhalla for Artists is still open. <laughs> All right, my channel. Okay, link, copy, paste. Let's go. Today I did it faster, nice. All right, and I did it on 1% on my phone. I have a feeling that my phone is always at 1%, one or two or 5%, always on, what's it called, low, what's it called? Low power mode. Oh, okay. Thank you. See, my wife is the best. She's like, she, she hears a problem and she's here to solve it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm telling you guys, if you find, if you find a nice partner, a wife, you are set for life. Of course, it's not going to be easy in the beginning, but then when you figure out how your jujus combine in the right way, you can be a great team. Uh, boom, 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 boom. All right, one minute left. Yo, oh, another Marco. I don't know how to distinguish you guys. 
Anyone else's stream fervor displaying the red bar? It's not hiding itself. I don't know. Can you maximize the stream? All right. So. Shall we? Let me have a last sip of coffee before we start. <laughs> All right, welcome everybody to lecture number 28. Today, we're going to be talking about portfolios. We'll be talking about what to do, what not to do, how it all works, how to network, and what do you need to what do you need to keep in mind when you are presenting your work to the world, right? Because a lot of people, believe it or not, do it wrong. We're going to be talking about what the main things to keep in mind, how to organize your portfolio, how to make recruiters love you by making your work more discoverable. And then overall, we're just going to look at a bunch of portfolios that I like uh, and then that they have a clear, you know, clear, simple statement. You know, it's very interesting. Each portfolio is like a giant illustration that describes you as a creator. And when we are posting any of our work as a character designer, you know, as an environment artist, as a, you know, as a, like as an illustrator for like card games or a color scripter or a vis dev artist like me, we'll, we'll always have to keep in mind that we're creating a portfolio not for likes, not for it to look just pretty, you know, we're creating a portfolio so a recruiter or a company or an art director or anyone who finds this page can do one thing is to figure out what we do and where do we fit into the pipeline. So with that in mind, let's dissect what makes a good portfolio and a bad portfolio. Okay, so let's get, let's open a, a document and start doodling. Okay, so first of all, when you're creating a portfolio, you need to understand who am I What do I do? What do I do, do, do? What do I do? What companies potentially can hire me? What companies can hire me? So before you even start posting anything, you need to, you need to discover your creative voice. And your creative voice is very important. Because a lot of, there's two approaches to making a portfolio. So for example, um, let me show you a character design portfolio that I need to find. Sorry for flashing images. If anyone is epileptic, I am sorry. Please don't die on my stream. Uh, okay, so this is Ron Broidy. He's a, well, we don't talk much anymore, but back in the days we talked a lot. And Ron is a character designer. He always did characters when he began, um, you know, his art journey. And, you know, when you are, you know, <clears throat> when you are first starting to paint anything, you don't know who you are, you don't know what companies can hire you, and you don't know what you do, but you have a tendency to do something. So every artist is like a Skyrim thing with different skills. Some are character designers, some environment artists, some keyframe art, right? And those skills can be here, here, or here. So for example, when I started um, my art station portfolio, and one second guys, I need to go close the door really quick because there's a long mower that distracts me. Probably not you, but me. <laughs> I'll be right back. Yeah. Okay, we're back. Can you close all the windows? Thank you. 
Um, yeah, so every artist is like a Skyrim character. They have their own levels. Uh, <laughs> Naruto running. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So every, every artist is, is a character, like in Skyrim, and then they have their own levels, what they're good at, right? And then you have to understand what your strong suits are. In the beginning, you will start level, leveling up. Well, honestly, that's the classic hero's journey, right? Everyone starts with what? With characters, right? But then, on, on you know, sometime further on, you discover something else. Let's say it be environments or anything else. And then my uh, advice to you, stick to it. Uh, why do you need to stick to it? Because you it's too early for you to diversify in every aspect of your portfolio because when you're just starting out you cannot be good at everything and the thing is when you're not good at everything when the recruiter looks at your portfolio like well if you are mediocre at everything i cannot hire you anywhere right so that's why it's really important to understand who you are and what do you do at least in the beginning and then basically go and then destroy that field in a positive way, right? You go and then you solely focus on the environment. So for example, when I started in my portfolio, I had a lot of environment work in it. And then slowly I discovered that I liked color keys. But the cool thing was I was still hired to do basically color keys because in my environments, I had pretty strong understanding of color and atmosphere, right? But I hated rendering. But over time, I discovered that I liked color keys. And now, if you look at my portfolio, it doesn't matter where you look, technically, where, where am I? You will see in the beginning, like this is my beginning stages when I was just starting out. It was like keyframe environments. It was, it was all about lighting. It was not very good work, but there was one thing in common. I like atmosphere and liked mood and I liked stories right and even though i didn't know who i wanted to be that's the only thing that i did because i knew what my, my you know strong suit was and i kept with it and i kept with it so when you are doing anything first figure out what your niche is right and then start leveling it up and then hopefully as soon as possible you'll find a job description and the job description is one of the three things right it's like environment artist uh, character designer uh, and honestly those are the two main ones and if you don't know what professions exist in visual development field I strongly recommend checking out uh, lecture number one in visual development uh, because it's called what is visual development it's lecture one because we describe all of those professions uh, by the way guys do you hear any <laughs> noises in the background or is it fine uh, okay. So, all right, you know who you are, and you know what you do. So you're an environment artist, a character designer, a color key artist, a creature designer, a prop designer, it doesn't matter. Then you need to keep leveling up what you do, all right? And then there's two approaches. One approach is this, who am I, what do I do? And then you discover your creative voice, you find your style, you find what you do, right? And then you see what companies can hire me. So you're going in a different direction. What you're doing is you're first investing into yourself and finding what you're good at and see what kind of style you developed. And then you see where you fit into the pipeline. And this is the best way, I think, to figure out uh, your art path and art career because it's very fulfilling because then you're hired for who you are. Then there's another one, which is first, who hires, right? What companies do I like and blah, blah, blah. And then you keep specific companies in mind. So for example, you can say, you know, Riot. And then you see what kind of like jobs are out there and you see what you like and then you specifically develop for Riot. So for example, that's why I wanted to show you uh, Ron's portfolio. Where, where are you, Ron? <laughs> Here you go. Because I, I knew Ron from a few years back on Discord. He really wanted to do, he really liked the game Dauntless. So what he did is he's like, well, I, I kind of like character design here and there. So I'll just create my portfolio 
specifically for that company. And then, you know, after a few years, he did fan art and he did everything and he got hired at Dauntless. And the thing is, Dauntless is very similar to League of Legends. Then he was hired for some League of Legends stuff and then for Soundfall, which is also pretty close in style, right? So this is another approach is with company in mind. So company in mind. And it's not a wrong approach, right? Especially if the company is your dream, right? But in my, like, in my art path, I really liked my stuff the most. And I think for me personally, the biggest compliment is when the company comes to you and says, we want your take on our universe or on our project here and there. That's why I work usually in commercials, animation, series and all of that. It's because people come for my taste and for my take for, through my creative filter. So yeah, I really suggest you just for the first five years of your creative path or for first, I don't know, two or three is just not think about anything in terms of what company needs from you. It's just study the fundamentals, figure out what you're good at. And then when you're, when you have at least, you know, 50 to 25 images already made, you look at them from a bird's eye view and say, Hmm, it kind of looks like I am an environment artist. All right, time to specialize in that. And then you start creating a specific portfolio, right? That is solely based around your profession, right? Well, we're going to talk about all rounded portfolio in terms of very diverse portfolio in terms of what's in it. But first, when let's say I'm a recruiter, when I look at, let's say Ron Ron's portfolio, I know one thing, this guy's a character designer and he's really good at it. And he's a character designer probably for like uh, MMORPG or League of Legends kind of style. Um, he's really good at, let's say, costume design, weapon design. I know that Ron also does creature designs, but when I look at this portfolio as a recruiter, in the first two seconds, it's like a YouTube thumbnail, you know? In the first second or two, the recruiter needs to know what do you do just by looking at your page right away so he can understand the recruiter where he can put you in a timeline right so first thing first when you're creating a portfolio look at it and say if i was a recruiter can i figure out what do i do if the answer is no your portfolio is horrible not because it's a horrible art but because the recruiter doesn't know where to hire you. And the thing is, the recruiter's attention span is very, very short. He's gonna, he's gonna look, uh -huh, okay, okay, uh-huh, 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 you know, and, if, and he looks through hundreds of artists a day, and if he cannot read what do you do from a first second, right, he will not spend ev extra five to 10 minutes exploring your portfolio. So, job number one. We need to be specific about what we do. And you know what, when you have a lot of clients and then you already established, honestly, your portfolio can be whatever the hell you want uh, because you already have the connections. You already have, you know, all the roads to other companies. And that's why you see a lot of experimentation, weird stuff in in pros portfolios because they don't care anymore they can do whatever they, the heck they want right if you look at ryan lang's for example portfolio it has everything it's like character design keyframes like stylized not stylized right because he's already established and the thing is you cannot have this kind of portfolio right from the start because you're just starting out there's no way you can explore into a realistic style then a stylized style and then kind of like a render style unrender style keyframes there's just there's just no time to do it and that's why he gradually evolved as an artist and did all those things like one at a time right when you're starting out there's no way you can do really like there's some very talented artists who can be good at everything but you know at the start to get your foot in the door find the niche and then have the first 10, 10 posts, the first 10 posts that are kind of like, that tell, hi, I am 
this artist that does this specific thing, right? So specific, you have to be specific about what about what you do. Specific about what we do. Misha English perfect. Specific about what you do, right? So second, right? Now we're going to the post uh in general right to what is going to be in the post so when you have your let's say title you need like writing line concept artist right with misha uh what do i have misha opla visdev and color scripting and what do i see in my portfolio i see visdev and color scripting right my title my name where do i live you know and then you know i have what i describe in my portfolio don't put you know gesture drawings into your environment portfolio, right? <laughs> don't put, you know, don't ever put student work that look like assignments that look, you know, that look weird uh, because what the recruiter is going to look like is like, oh, this guy is a student, right? So always put only specific thing that you do. And then the first two seconds is your first impression to buy that five minutes of exploration of your portfolio then we're getting get into the post so okay let's say Misha Oplev is definitely color scripting uh my first two posts ignore them it's the art camp and my brush pack right but then uh look what 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 we see in our, in our first post this is color scripting this is this is not very polished this is mood and atmosphere and then in the first post ever i have how many paintings in there uh, one two three four five like, like 12 paintings in there another thing guys please 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 stop individually posting one picture at a time i know you want to make your portfolio look bigger than it actually is right but the thing is the recruiters can see right through it and another thing is why why make individual paintings we can just do one thing that you can scroll down. So you always have to think kind of like of a user experience of the recruiter. So first, the first express impression of your page, he's like, okay, I got it. I know what the package of this gift is. He's a VizDev guy and a color scripter. And I can see that there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of good colors. Everything looks cinematic and atmospheric, animation-like. Okay, let me check out his work. You know, I'm right now role playing as the recruiter. I'm like, okay, cool. All right. So this is nice. So uh, a lot of time of day, right? A lot of, uh, you know, kind of different lighting setups, moods and atmosphere. Okay. You know, if you're a character designer, the HR needs to, again, see character design stuff in you. So for example, I do have character designs because I don't care what my portfolio is anymore because I do have all the connections. And, I, and this is not me trying to say that I'm great. It's just will accumulate over time. So for example, if I'm a character designer, I'm like, okay, cool. So he has character designs and he thinks about their backstory. The designs are all unique. He thinks about this, this and that. So what you need to do is, again, put yourself in the shoes of the recruiter and say, what are recruiters are looking for? And recruiters are looking for first, a specific role in the pipeline. And secondly, they need to see that you can do it. So when you're doing character design, you need to show that you're thinking about costume design, you're thinking about this, this, and that. You need to do 3D design callouts if it's for 3D team, and textures, for environments, the same thing. The main thing that you need to show through your, um, through your portfolio, so for example, here I have a world building portfolio. You need to show not only what you can do, <coughs> sorry, but you also need to show how you did it. Why? Because the art recruiter or HR or, or art director needs to see your mindset, not only how you came to the finish line, but what was the process behind it. So a lot of sketches and processes is good at the end of it all, because you're showing that, well, it's I not only can do pretty stuff, but I can think very well also. So that's why it's important not only be specific and do good art, but also you need to be a good thinker and show 
that you are a good thinker. So we will organize all of this a little bit later. This is just treat this as a blackboard for my for my thoughts, right? Okay, cool. So HR discovered us, looked at the gift wrapping, understood that the gift inside is pretty cool, and then he clicks on our thing. He understands that whatever is advertised in the title is actually in the package itself. And he understands that we not only can do pretty images, but he also understands that we're great thinkers, how we came to it, by showing the breakdown process of our mindset, right? And that's awesome. And then HR says, great, let's hire this person. Okay, but you're gonna say, but Misha, I have like one subscriber on my art station and that subscriber is my mom or me from an alternative <laughs> account and I like my own stuff. What do I do, right? That's where we come to the concept of networking and using the algorithms of ArtStation to gain more visibility. I'm gonna get you first, I need to show you how to be discoverable for the most part just from your post. So when you're doing your post like this, first of all, you need to understand the attention spans of our viewer or the HR is also, or the art director is very low because they need to go, go, go. You know, different art directors work differently, but we need to make, as again, other people's life more easier. So this time, right? So this time we're trying to make the HR's life easier and our director's life easier. What did I do on this post? Can someone guess? Well, I, first I show what I'm good at in my gift wrapping, but then the thumbnail itself has to be inviting to show that there's more stuff in inside of it, right? So it's, you treat it like a YouTube game. So people are interested. So for example, here I have a post with different things. And then the thing is, if I had just one illustration, maybe the HR set thinks it's one illustration, but by providing three in a row, the HR says, oh, it's probably a continuous thing. Let me click on it. Right, but character designs is pretty easy. Oh, he's probably good at character designs. Let me let me click on it, and there's going to be many character designs in it. That's going to be a nice surprise. But then, for example, for this one, if there's too many images at the same time, what do I do? I also create a little preview at the top, and basically saying, "Here's what you're going to get all together." And the HR is going to be like, "Oh, cool!" And then he can scroll down and see the rest of the stuff. So we kind of need to show little paths and indications and leave as many things out of the equation for our failure to basically work on user experience of our viewer or the HR. It doesn't matter who you make life easier, HRs or just general subscriber on our station. If you're gonna do it this way, it's kind of like understanding the human psychology. Because when I click on this, what I see first, I see a big compilation of everything and I understand that's the whole post. I get interested, I'm like, mm, that's cool. Now I want to see things more in detail, right? So that's what you have to understand is, you know, keep the HR interested by creating little hooks. This thing on top, which is the banner, is a little hook that lets the HR scroll all the way at the bottom. But for example, if you have something unfinished at the top that looks bad, the HR is not going to scroll down. So it's kind of like a social media game, right? It's really weird that we have to do it, but we have to do it, right? Another thing that you have to understand is keywords that you put in those things and description. Uh, make sure that you're a professional and never self bash yourself in the, in, in, in the, but I'm going to tell you this, HRs never, they, they never, you know, they never read this very rarely when they do read this, this is just, you know, um, Another thing is in your portfolio, always leave your social links for other things. So for example, here I have my Twitch, Gumroad, YouTube, and all that stuff, right? Another thing is, let's go into edit. So that's a very important thing when you post anything is, first of all, you need to think about your thumbnail. And I know this is a little bit weird, but again, we are our, we know who we are, you know what the gift wrapping is, and now we got the recruiter interested on clicking on something, but this is how we make the recruiter click. Another thing is, is keywords that you put over here. Always put your first and last name. Like for example, I always put Misha Opliff in. Why? Because the thing is, if you Google Misha Opliff on Google, 
the first thing that comes in is my arch station. The first images that come in is my arch station. So if you have a very popular name, there's too many like John Doe's or something like that, make sure that you either have a nickname next to your um, you know, name or make sure that you, you maybe use your middle name or something like that. But always put in hashtags on Instagram, on ArtStation, always put your name in the description. Another thing is what hashtags do on ArtStation specifically is because you have to understand your name, only you and your mom knows your name. The recruiter doesn't know your name, right? Right? The recruiter doesn't know your name. He only knows the keywords about what do you do. So every time you do a post, ask yourself, if you were a recruiter and you tried to discover yourself, what hashtags or keywords would you put in your description or in your title? So for example, I'm a color key artist and a visit dev artist. I put color keys, color boards, color script. I put three variations of the same thing. Why? Because in the industry, I know that different people call color scripts and color boards different names, right? I put an illustration and then I put, you know, Nomen Duck, time of day, lighting, nature, all of that stuff, right? Because now if I go, let's say, into search engine and I say color, let's say I put color keys in, color keys, you know, I'm right here, a number two, and then I'm a number five. And then this one is like number 10. And this, this is also me. And this is also me. And this is also me. And there's a bunch of artists there. So now, even, even the recruiter doesn't know my name. When he puts color keys in, he finds one picture of mine, another picture of mine. So now if he goes through this entire page, right? And I've, of course, a bunch of my students are also in here. Um, because I tell them <laughs> what to put in the thing. But now the HR can be like, okay, I see this guy many times, but maybe what if he puts in color boards, right? Color, see, I even misspelled color board, color boards. See, I, sometimes it's actually really good to put in the wrong definition, even in your hashtags, like color boards or color boards or color, something with a mistake that is commonly occurred, right? Because sometimes people will misspell and if they misspell it wrongly, you're gonna be the only person who shows up on there. Uh, so for example, color boards, let's see if I'm there. One, two, three, four, five, six. First six, it's like, again, this is not me trying to flex. This is me just playing the game correctly, right? And then all the other people, um, you know, maybe it's old post or something like that. Another trick that you can use is if you get from the top of the trending on the keyword, what you can do is you can hide your post and then and then publish it again and you should get back to the to the top because ArchStation treats us for the latest posted. Right. So again, by creating by creating different so if if a hashtag, it's a road. So color color key or color board, those, was, those are rolled to you for, you know, for the recruit to discover you. So when you're posting anything, don't put in character design, put in samurai character design, Japanese style character design, as specific as possible because you need to understand that there's some specific roles that not many people take. So for example, color keys and color boards, there's like, I don't know, there's like 25 people <laughs> on that. But if you look at, let's say, hashtag, you know, character design, right? There's gonna be like hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of people and it's really hard to stand out, right? So you need to be very specific, like Japanese sword guy, you know, blah, blah, blah. So those are roads that you can, that you can set up for your uh, HR to discover you about that specific thing that you do and find your work. Another thing is, is your thumbnail of your work. So first of all, do not post singular images. Why? Because, unless it's illustration. <laughs> if you are, you know, if you're showing your portfolio, have, you know, two to three maybe posts but like 10 images inside that are really good, then 101 images that are bad. So work on quality of presentation and not, not quantity. Like I remember when I was just starting out, I went to like Lightbox and everything's like, oh yeah, I have hundreds upon hundreds of singular images 
that all oh, mediocre. And then, you know, I made the HR scroll all the way and then put the button. But then what I did, I all those hundreds of images, I just put in one document because I'm like, you know what? I want to make other people's life easier. So, right now we're going to the thumbnail, you know, this is kind of like a, almost like a YouTube <laughs> school. Why thumbnail is so um, important? Well, because the thing is our main marketing rule, uh, tool for you to get discover on ArchStation is our trending page. Trending page and latest. So for example, there's 2D and there's 3D. And of course there's different little things. Look at what official titles are on uh, ArchStation. So for example, storyboards, there's lighting and everything else. Keep those in mind because people do browse those, right? So your role as an artist on ArchStation is to try to get into trending page as soon as, not as soon as possible, but as often as possible and get to at least like line 10 or 12 because anything that is past line 12, 10 or 12 basically doesn't exist. Like not a whole lot of people scroll past that. So when you're doing your ArchStation thumbnail, what you need to do is you go into ArchStation trending page, you take a screenshot of this thing, then you go to your Photoshop document, you paste it in, and then what you do is you copy your own thumbnail, all right, and see if it stands out, all right? So for example, a lot of the times what I do is I, I first do a thumbnail, I'm like, well, this doesn't look good. So I either make it more contrasty, you know, to stand out like this, maybe I choose another one, because you have to do whatever you can to stand out from the other people. So for example, this really stands out, right? To click on it. So this stands out, this yellow thing stands out, this guy is a very interesting silhouette. You know, for character designs, like there was this, this, this joke that if you just, you know, I think we did an experiment, this, this guy who just posted just, just a naked bum bum on the thumbnail. And then it got like million clicks on it. Another thing is what you have to understand. Yes, thumbnail is really important. But the thing is, if you don't get initial uh, support on your post on ArchStation, you won't be able to get to trending or very rarely will be able to get to trending because your thumbnail is the only thing that gets people interested. So then you're going to say, Misha, but what gets people interested? And now I'm going to talk about the broken algorithm of ArchStation. That sucks. It's horrible. Is it important what time of day you post on ArchStation? No, not really. Because what is, you know, what's important is engagement. So for example, we are all in a Discord group right now. And then what do I do is, so the algorithm on ArchStation works like this. Um, so you, let's say you posted your painting. Uh, let's just hide this. So you posted your painting and it's not on trending page yet. So you have, so it's, it's posted somewhere here. You have 15 to 20 minutes of first engagement when the algorithm decides where to put you in order of trending page or does it put you in trending page whatsoever? So you have 15 to 20 minutes. And how does it decide to put you in a trending page or, done, or not? It decides by engagement. So. If you've been liked by another person who has like one or five followers, let's say they like and their comment is like 0 0.5 points. Let's say a person has 100 to 500 followers, they're let's say a one. And let's say another person who like you have let's say 5,000 plus subscribers, their like is counted as three points, for example. What does it mean, Misha? What do you mean all those points? I can explain you. So, originally, if you wanna get into a trending page, you either need to accumulate like three to five points by like, let's say, 20 likes from your comrades and comments in, in first, first to one to two minutes, because that's what says our station says, okay, this post is really good because people like it a lot. Or you need to be liked by like two people who have like 5,000 plus subscribers, and then you will be launched to the trending page as soon as possible. Important note, yes, the algorithm will launch you into the trending page, and it's super easy. That's what we're gonna do when we graduate with your, um, with your diplomas. All of you are gonna end up on the trending page. And you know, 
Well, because we do like your work and we're not abusing the algorithm, it's just how algorithm works, right? But the thing is about this, it's not hard to get to the trending page, right? It's not hard to get to the trending page. It's hard to maintain, to be maintained on a trending page because then the algorithm, what decides is when it gets you to the trending page, you either move up to the first place, third or fourth, right? Or then you start moving down and then your picture gets replaced. So, and the thing is to maintain your first spot on the trending page, you need to see first if your thumbnail stands out, if it, if you got to the trending page and after two hours, everything is yellow and your painting is yellow, change your thumbnail after two hours to something blue, right? And then if it's back to blue, change your thing back to yellow and just monitor it. Another thing is guys, if your post didn't do well and you really invested some time to it, just hide it and then repost it on the next day and see if it does it again. Like for example, I did it many times that, you know, uh, a story of mine didn't do very well. And I'm like, you know what, probably it was just a sucky day and then it was just not good. So I just hit it. I tested out the algorithm and the algorithm regurgitated it, right? And then I just tested it out on the second day, right? And the thing is, if, if you have like almost no followers whatsoever and you're trying to do this, no one will notice. Like with my stuff, yeah, people do notice. And I usually do a little PS. Sorry guys, I apologize. I just wanted to repost this again. And I'm usually trying to be, you know, fair and, and square and, and honest about it. So yeah, that's how the algorithm works. So for example, if you want to get to the trending page, you ask me, it may be another person who has a few 2,000, you know, uh, followers. And then you ask another 10 to 15 of your friends and you do it in the first five minutes of your post. You know, every time when you, Prepare to post something, you know, notify, notify your group. So for example, in Russia, we have a lot of group chats that people use and what they do is they say, Hey guys, I'm ready to post. Are you guys ready? And then they post and then everyone goes, goes ah, Valhalla. and they start liking like crazy. And then the post is jump started to the trending page. Right. And yeah, that's the stupid algorithm of art station. And I think it's really important that you know, that you guys know how it works. Like for example, I did that, you know, when I was starting out, I would, you know, I would go and, and ask my friends who had a few thousand subscribers, like, can you like, do you like this? And if you like this, like, you know, please support. And if you don't, don't bother. Right. I was, I was trying to be nice about it and not to in the face, you know, and the thing is guys, you have to understand you need to be visible for the right reasons. So if you're going to just do your stick figure thing and get it to the trending, you're not going to get any jobs. What you need to do is you need to have the right portfolio piece that is going to be your ticket to get notified by other people. So your job is not to get to the trending page. Your job is to get the right artwork that you're proud of, that is ready to be shown to the world, to the trending page. Honestly, if you're bad right now, and if your portfolio is not ready, it's better that you don't post anything or just post for like, so people can follow you. But it's better if people don't see your work, especially recruiters and HRs, because you're gonna be like, hey, well, they're gonna ignore it anyways. But the thing is, they're gonna, you're gonna be like, hey, this is my unfinished work. And you're gonna spam all of that stuff into Google and everything else. So what you have to understand is, our station is not Instagram. Our station is only for your best work. And then it's better to have 10 works that are amazing or even one artwork that is amazing than a hundred mediocre ones, right? Because you're judged on your worst piece usually in your, in your, uh, in your thing. So, okay, let's recap. So first you discover who you are, you know, what do you do? You develop your style and you find what companies can hire you. Then you develop a package, a package of strong suit, um, thumbnails that advertise what you do and you're trying to make your recruiter click on you and then go and see how you think. And then to actually have more notoriety to see your gift and your, your, your package for the HR, what you need to do, you need to use hashtags as roads. So in the search engine, when they go in and they need, I need this color key artist and they put it in, you set up those roads to your portfolio for the HR to find you and you try to get to trending page as much as possible by using the algorithm, you know, asking your friends to like in the first five minutes of existence of your, uh, of your post. Right. And hopefully accumulate some people. Well, you know, if I'm already on the, on the, uh, you're already on my discord. Right. And if I see worthy paintings that I see people really, uh, you know, 
really put their mind to it and the effort, I do like it. You know, maybe you don't notice it, but sometimes you can see myself in the likes there, right? So if you post anything, you can post to my, I have two servers, Valhalla for artists and Valhalla camp for artists, right? And then if I see good quality work, you know, I do. But the thing is, you know, again, the right post has to be visible. If you get to a trending page, that's your, you know, that's like, hey, I do exist. And that should be something good. Like another thing is like a lot of my friends who abuse the algorithm, like we drew like a stick figure and then we have a bunch of friends who have multiple thousands of subscribers and then we just boosted the stick figure that was absolutely of no value of artistic value. And then it got to like number five or number one trending spot, right? Um, yeah. Do HRs watch trending page? Yes, I think they do because, you know, art directors, a lot of the times are on art station. They have it just open and then sometimes they'll just see and it's just, you know, it's easier if you're on a trending page to be discovered. Of course, that's the only, it's not the only thing. The whole, you know, art station, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, it's a package thing. So what you have to understand is you're setting up roles. So for example, everyone has like ArtStation is the most professional place, but it's a road to discover you. Instagram is the same thing. Let's say YouTube is the same thing. Uh, something else, like for example, LinkedIn, for example, or is it in, I don't know, or, or Facebook, for example, right? What those things are, or even hashtags to your portfolio, but it's not really to you, right? But Instagram, all of those are roads. What you have to do is you have to interconnect those. So Facebook has a link to your Instagram, Instagram has a link to your YouTube, uh, YouTube has a link tree into your LinkedIn uh, and everywhere you see art station. So if people find you on Instagram, they can find everything else and that means they can find you, right? And another, another thing is like hashtags or links are things that link to all of those things that let the HRs discover other roads to you. Ah, oh, Joe. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you, my friend, Joe, Joe, Joe. Thank you. Uh, you're 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 distracting me, man. Uh, you're distracting me, Joe. Um, so yeah, so those are the roads. So the, the, <laughs> those are the roads uh, to your uh, to <laughs> to your you. And what do you do, right? So now, right when you know how the algorithm works, right? Let's, let's just talk a little bit more in depth about different social media. So ArtStation is a compilation of your best. So top 10 of everything. You only post things that you have to think, you know, 10 times before you post. And then you have to think about your post from bottom up, how you're gonna, uh, you know, how you're going to organize it so the recruiter understands what's inside of it and you have to really pay attention. Instagram is a whole nother game. Uh, whoops. So Instagram is a whole nother game. Why? Because on Instagram, you just show that I exist. And then Instagram is not like, you can't be discovered on Instagram, but Instagram is good for like Inktober, you know, all of that stuff and you know then you exist on that and you know all the art directors and a lot of people do follow those stuff and then you can compile all of your inktober stuff and then put it on art station as one as one package you know linkedin you know i don't use linkedin that much i don't think it's very useful facebook is dead i think uh youtube is actually a very good one especially if you want to do your own thing for your own project right but if you do some you know if you do some art talks or you do some, you know, speed paints, it's also a good thing to discover you because believe it or not, art directors do procrastinate on YouTube a lot of the times and they have, so basically what you're doing, you're fighting for visibility because again, I remember I had this thing is your portfolio is, this is, this is Misha land that I stand on and it could be the most fun place in the world where there's like, you know, there's like rides and roller coasters and like, fireworks but you're like you're standing in the middle of a freaking ocean and you're just partying by yourself and no one can admire it right 
there's a possibility maybe like a freaking Titanic can like, you know, swim by and discover you and be like, well, that's cool, but it's very rare, right? It's, a, it's very rare. Um, so for example, what you need to do is you need to start doing bridges. You need to st putting up giant signs saying, look here. You need to have a little boat and then travel to another island and travel back and have a little line in between it. So that's called networking. So another thing is, guys, if you're horrible at networking, if you're a great artist, I'm going to tell you, please, you need to you need to work on your communication skills and you have to honestly level up this game. Because if you're the, if you're the greatest Da Vinci of them all, if Da Vinci lived somewhere in Madagascar and he was the only one, like population one on that island, and no one discovered him ever, Da Vinci would have been unknown in our time. So sadly, but you have to play the social media game. You have to play the algorithm game to get no noticed, right? That's only a tool. So again, the only thing that Let's 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 recap. So for, uh, you need to build roads. So first, I know who I am. I know who I am, and what I do. You know, and then you have your creative voice. So that leads to I can be useful. for this companies and then you because the thing is if you discover your artistic voice and then you see where you fit in that means you are being who you are and then you find work there's no problem on starting with a company and then kind of like putting your creative voice under that company but i really don't recommend doing that okay i can be useful for this companies and you write out a list so for example like spa studios for me for example spa studios netflix animation anything right and then you come up with a list of studios and then what you do is you go and then you check out other people you check other people like for example okay, like i work for netflix animation you say hey this guy worked for netflix animation what is in his portfolio what you need to do is you need to find a bunch of people who kind of do what you are, what, what you are doing, right? And then you have to compare yourself and see what they put in their portfolio that they got them hired in the first place. And then you just copy their portfolio. So now you, you compile, right? You compile a portfolio. Oh, whoops. Uh, so you compile a portfolio with those guys in mind or reorganize it like well, you you have you might have a lot of things posted on your art station already but you can say hey this looks bad in my portfolio and i will what you're going to do is technically you're going to be filtering what is in your portfolio by trying to get into here and keeping the hr you know in mind in the back of your head right so then when you compile your portfolio first you think about right the experience of the HR experience of HR so first like is it is it clear what do I do what do I do so even though this is kind of this is second so first you need to be discovered by the HR so first are there roads to my work, right? So, and the roads we did discover. So it's like hashtags and the trend and then an art station, uh, you know, keywords thing, like color keys, color boards, everything else, your thumbnail, and then people liking your thing to get to the trending page, right? Right, all of that stuff. And then that's, those are the roads. Are there roads to my work? And then again, Instagram, YouTube, all the social medias are parts of the roads, right? Uh, and then when the HR discovers you, it's like, is it clear what do I do, right? Uh, do I have strong work, right? And you do that by com 
comparing yourself to other people. And then do I show my thinking behind the process, okay? So those are very important things that you need to have available. And then thirdly, okay, so I know this is stupid and a lot of people will think that me you don't have to mention it, but you know, a lot of the times you need to show like the country that you live in so people can understand, can they hire you or cannot they hire you? If you live in a country that is accessible and people see that you're like from Canada, United States, you know, put your country in there, right? But if you live in a super weird country that is hard to access, don't put your country in. Why? Because again, we have to think about the user experience. So for example, that's when, you know, the competitive edge sometimes on the American side, but not always. Because if people say, okay, this is the United States, okay, that's super easy. But if they say some kind of like Zimbabwe, and super weird country, they, they might think twice. So you know what, if you live in a hard access, access country, don't put your country in. Bait them in by looking at your portfolio and then say, here's my email. And then they will already commit to writing you and then you can say, and then like 10 emails later, like, hey, by the way, I live in this country. Uh, what forms do I need to fill in, right? Um, yeah. So now when you have this mindset of, who is my audience, right? And your audience, HRs and art directors. If you, imp if you implement all of this and you post with this in mind, again, because a lot of people, they just, I call it, you know, it's just crap shit posting on their, on, on their art station. You know, they just, they, just throw, they, they just throw an image out there and just say, fly. <laughs> you know, what's that, what's that cartoon? It's like when the guy is like letting down the, like a pigeon fly and goes, <laughs> that's you know um you know <laughs> that's your post you know and you really need to make your post fly and of course you'll fail and flop but if you have this in mind and you understand how the game works it's easier for your stuff to get noticed right so now let's get to the specifics right this is what's kind of like out there and just look at good portfolios. So for example, let's, lo let's look at Nicolas Saviori, a super cool character designer, right? And then over here he says freelance concept visual artist, right? Well, you know, not very specific, but you know, his portfolio has like Clash, Crash, Hearthstone, all of that stuff. And then, you know, all you see is character design in his portfolio. So again, let's implement the, you know, the five second rule. I'm like, okay, Let's say I discovered this guy on the trending page by him setting up all of those bridges and he has a lot of followers now, so it's not hard for him to get to the trending page. You know, I'm like, okay, freelance concept artist, visual artist. But then if I was him, I would probably just say character designer because that's technically what he does, but okay. But all I see is like a bunch of character designs that are very illustration polished. And I'm like, okay, where can I put this guy? So I'm like, oh, he's really good at character design, character design, character design, but also he can, you know, wrap them up and then make them into illustrations. So I can use him in illustration or I can use him as a character designer. But as you can see, the main thing is he has character design, a lot of lots of lots of character design. And then now I'm kind of interested. I'm like, okay, let's see, you know, like Ninja Turtles, cool. Awesome, like rendering style, right? And I'm like, okay, cool. You know what? I'll put him on my want a higher list and I know exactly where he's gonna fit into the pipeline, right? Again, we're role playing as HR. Let's say Misha Oplev, right? Biz dev and color curtain. Okay, cool. Lots of colors. Uh, I see a few characters, kind of weird, you know, but I see a lot of keyframes. Okay, let's say I'm interested in this. Okay, cool. He can maintain a story. He can think about the entire thing. Uh, okay, cool. Let's put him him, like maybe, maybe we'll hire him. All right, Marcin Jakubowski. Visual development artist, what I see, lots of keyframes. Cool, where can I hire him for? Keyframes, awesome. And then I can maybe discover other things that this guy can do, like prop design or environment design. But the thing is, the main thing is keyframes, lots of color, atmosphere, mood, awesome, right? Just by looking at all of this, I will know where I can hire him and then I'm already interested. And then if I'm gonna spend more time on his portfolio, I might find something 
that I'm also looking for. Like for example, like environment art. I'm like, oh, he's not only doing keyframe, but there's a few environment art stuff. Cool. But again, the main selling point is this one specific thing that you're good at, and then you can buy yourself basically an opportunity to do other jobs, right? Uh, for example, Satoshi Matsuura. I'm not sure if I pronounced his name right, but I love this guy. And he creature and character design artist. What do we see? We only see creature and character art, right? That's the only thing that he posts. He doesn't post anything else. And man, this guy is so productive. All right, well, with this guy, he does post singular images. But the thing is, just by the glance of this, I don't even need to click on anything. I can see how clear his silhouettes are. I can be already, okay, this guy is pretty good at what he does. I don't even need to click on anything inside. Uh, all right, some people say, please look. Han Liu, sure, let's look at Han Liu Art Station. Uh, or Khan Liu, like for example, principal illustration arts of Riot Games. So here we see a lot of characters in an environment that look illustration wise. So if I was an HR for Riot Games and he already works for Riot Games, I'm like, okay, cool, I will hire this guy or girl, I'm not sure, that guy. Uh, like, Pupu24, Gata Pavlovska, very good artist. Uh, she does a lot of stuff, right? But here you can see characters, 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 characters. I'm like, what am I gonna hire her as character designer? And then I can go in and then again, she has the, her strong suits as characters, but she also does really good, interesting keyframes and illustration, and a little bit of animation. But again, the selling point is one thing that this person is really good at. And again, she's been in the industry for a while. She freelanced for a lot of people, right? And she can diversify her portfolio now because she's already such a strong artist and people see that she doesn't have to care about too much consistency in what she shows and you earn your way in. So for example, you know, uh, Faustine Dumontier, I'm not sure, but uh, this artist, right, is really good in environments. And that's the only thing that this artist posts. Maybe a few characters here, but if the ratio has to be like 80 to 20%, right? So 80 is one thing that you're good at, 20% variety if you want to show it. But in the beginning, I say no variety, just do 80%, uh, do like 100%, that's what you do. Um, yeah, so... There's a lot of questions in the chat right now. I'll answer them a little bit later. So please do, please do, 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 uh, leave them for the, for, the, for the last session. Again, so Ron, again, I understand. But again, how do I discover Ron? Let's just look at, you know, care. Let's look at character design. Let's, let's put ourselves in the mind of an HR who wants to, for example, hire for the project Dauntless. I put in character design. What do I get? I get like a million things and I can either scout through this or it can be specific and it can be character design, dauntless, for example, right? Uh, or I can be just put in dauntless, for example, as my keywords. And wh wh who do I see? I see you, I see you Ron, right? So now we're like, okay, cool. We understand the game, right? But what if you want to do everything in in your project like you are a world builder well or let's say a lot of questions right now when you're posting your um big project right now uh and your big project is you know the, the visual development thing that we're doing through our camp and it's going to be look something like this right so what do what do we what did we do on our camp? So first we did a, a starting point frame, a guy with a stick looking at the world, right? So it's a starting point. That was our first homework. Then what we did is we did our character design turnaround, right? We did a character design turnaround. Um, yeah. And that was cool. And then maybe with a few design call outs. This looks here, this looks like this, right? That's another post, right? And then this is character. And then we also did what? We did facial expressions to that character. If I don't, if I don't, if I'm not mistaken, plus poses, right? 
Then what we did, we did interior design, and then we did one exterior design where 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 the person where the person lives. All right, so we did one interior with some design callouts. Interior, and then we did one exterior. So let's say it, it will be a house. Man, we, we did a lot of homework. And then exterior. And then we did three keyframes. So, and then we did three keyframes. One, two, three keyframes. Some people did variation of those for time of day. So for example, this is night and this is sun. Sure, why not? Uh, let's say just put this as a variation. So now you're like, man, this is a big world building um, project that I'm doing. And then I was training you to be an ultimate artist warrior who can think about the whole world in general, right? But some of you want to do more character oriented art. Some want to do more environment oriented art. And some want to make more of a keyframe oriented art. It's not bad that you thought about character, emotion, exterior, interior, even if let's say you're just a keyframe artist, because this shows what? How I think, right? If you're a character artist, what you're gonna do is, well, let's imagine what we're advertising in the package. I'm a character designer, right? What do you do? Well, all the keyframes and everything else is going to be at the bottom and everything character related, right? Let's say, so we're going to have the emotions here, right? Let's say if this, if you are a character designer, right? You're going to put your you know, characters first and then you might put, you know, your one keyframe where it is. And then maybe you put your three keyframes with your character over here. And then you're going to show, Hey, I also thought about where the character lives right about interior and exterior. So now the crown jewel is going to be your character design. You make an emphasis on that. Let's think if you are uh, just a regular world building guy, like a visual development like me, I gonna just show Hey, this is the world. This is the character. This is his emotions. This is where he lives. And those are the things that can he, he goes through. Let's say if I want to show more of my design uh, aspect of my brand, you know what, and this is pretty good. If you want to show that you're a concept artist, if I want to show that I'm a storyteller, well, I'm going to show my three keyframes first, and then I'm going to show what went into those keyframes, explain everything else, right? So again, it's nice to have super specific things. And another thing is those are some people have more defined character and then some have characters just as sketches, just as add on. So that's why the program that I came up with, it goes to anybody who wants to be in any role, right? Why? Because it's still like character designers need, still need to think where the character lives. Environment artists still need to think who lives in their environment. Keyframe artists need to think about all of this, right? And visual development artists need to th uh, like world builders need to think about all of this. So when you're posting something to your portfolio, you need to understand who you are, what you're good at, right? And what's the crown and jewel that you want to be hired for, right? And then you make the, the main thing, right? Because you have to be just an illustrator and you just say whatever looks prettier, put it at the top and make it your thumbnail. If you want to be hired for creative thinking and your strong suit is brainstorming, you know, have a bunch of sketches as your thumbnail on your uh, art station thing, right? So yeah, don't worry. You have a lot of, you know, you have a lot of homework to show or in your post on our station, right? But again, uh, organize it by thinking about your post. So let's imagine that this is an art station post. This is actually how I would have organized my art station post, right? Maybe I would have probably put the keyframes first, maybe something like this, right? And then some variations and show my, you know, how I came up to it. And then I would say, this is the, you know, this is, this is our tab and this is my name and this is the comment section, all right? So what you need to do is post one, for example, treat your post like it's an artwork, 
okay? In our artwork, what do we do? Where's my main focal point, right? What's the story? How the viewer reads my composition, top to bottom or something like that. So always ask yourself when you are experiencing your ArtStation post, you know, what if you view it for the first time? Get yourself in the shoes of a viewer or the HR, doesn't matter, and see what the simple statement is. So for example, if I have my keyframes first and I have everything else and I emphasize those and explain more, this guy's like, well, he's a keyframe artist who is really good at world building, who knows a little bit of everything, but he's really good at keyframes. If I have my character design first with emotion, I'm like this is a character designer who is also a really good world builder, right? Uh, yeah. So that's how you have to think. So there's a lot of, I see a lot of questions in the, in the chat. I'm curious about our post because on my case, at least some work looks extremely better than others. I have only environment design sketches basically. Yeah, so that's the thing. You only succeed at things that you're good at and other things just keep them small. So for example, if I'm gonna have, if I want to emphasize on keyframes, I want to have, you know, three high race keyframes over here. And then if my, again, if I need to hide that I'm not really good at environment art, you know, have two little thumbnails underneath those keyframes, right? So for example, okay, if I'm a character designer, I'm gonna have this like this, right? And then if my sketches suck of the environment, I'm gonna have two little ones in a strip together, right? Another thing is work on your presentation, on your on, on your art station thing. Like I'm gonna show weird things. Like for example, uh, see this stuff over here? It's like very wide, but I had a banner. So if you look at the banner, this is a separate thing. Right. And then this color script was vertical, but then when I was posting, it was too small. So what I did I do? Well, I cropped each color frame like this and uploaded it one by one. So if we're just going to go into edit, you will see a bunch of singular things. Why? Because I thought about the presentation, right? Another thing like this is my, basically my color keys, right? What did also do? Well, I thought, well, the color keys are too small for the viewer to look at, and I want to make them better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it like this, and you can you can you know just upload single ones. And then what I want to show is I want to show the final keyframe from the animation, and then what my color key looked like, right? Because it would be nice that the HR will actually see that my color keys were actually used by real 3D artists, right? And then I did it for each keyframe moment, and then I'm like, okay, cool. Well he already looked through the entire thing. Let me summarize what he looked at so he can see the entire thing together. And then kind of said, thank you, right? That it belongs to this, this and that kind of like as a nice ending screen, right? And then I included the YouTube video. So if they got so far, they can actually see the animation, right? Um, so yeah, it's all about what do you want to convince to the HR, right? What story, see, that's why storytelling is so important because anything that we do in life is basically that. It's human psychology, right? Um, feel after the stream, I'll go hide all my posts and then post them again with the right tags. Yeah, um, just make sure you hashtag your own name in it. So when another thing is like, like Google, right? So another thing you have to understand that you need to go and then make sure that your name is Googleable. So for example, if you put Misha Oplif in, that's the first thing that pops in. Okay. The first four links. If you're going to have like John Spankadoodle and there's like 5 million John Spankadoodles, you need to make sure that you are somehow discoverable if your name is too weird, right? So either have a super specific last name or even come up with a nickname. For example, a lot of people like, a lot of Russian people who have very hard pronounced names would dumb it down to some to something weird but pronounceable, and they will use that uh, as they as their artist name, right? Uh, what else do I want to talk about today? Yeah, the general rules of your art station portfolio. What you need to understand is we're not thinking about quantity; we're thinking about quality of the post. So, for example, when if you look at my portfolio, 
right now, like all this is unposted right now. Uh, and I probably will never post it or I'll maybe get to it sometimes. But for example, see, I have a lot of singular character designs. I, I hid it all. It's not published anymore because I'm not like, look how many things is not published anymore. This was my entire portfolio back in the days with multiple things in it. But the thing is, if it doesn't benefit your portfolio, it harms your portfolio just in like an illustration, right? So an ideal portfolio, some people say seven to 10 pieces. Uh, some people say, you know, it's 10 pieces. I say for me, when I'm looking at people's portfolio, I need five to 10 posts that have five to 10 images inside them, right? So I say that don't treat them as illustrations, like five to 10 illustration, five to 10 projects. So for example, Olaf and Gruul, I wanna be a keyframe artist, right? So one, two, there's 10 images in here, right? Cool, great, all right. Uh, Technically, this could have been a portfolio of 10 images. I could hand it out to someone. But honestly, I think it would be good if you go through five to 10 projects like this that are five to 10 paintings each, because what you are showing to your client is your project orientated. You are showing that you can think about one thing for a long time and then you show it through one post. Right. So my, again, an ideal portfolio for me, at least not everybody is when you have 10 posts, one, two, or let's say five that have 10 images describing and you work on it. One, two, three, four, five on them. Right. So that's like what? 25 frames or 25 images, right? This is an ideal portfolio for me. Because first of all, you're going to learn a lot by doing those. And secondly, you're going to be, you know, showing that you can do one project all the way through. If you're an illustrator, just 10 illustration images is enough, right? If you're a storyboard artist, I don't know what the qualification is. You just need a demo reel, right? Like, I think I have a storyboard thing over here somewhere. Yeah, here's a storyboard. So just, just a bunch of storyboards to show that you can do storyboards. Um, yeah, so, but again, if you see that there's a weak link in your portfolio, delete it. So, because it's better to have three images that are amazing than five images that two will, again, ruin the experience for other three. Um, yeah, it's like your artwork has to fight for an opportunity to be posted on our station. Um, yeah, I think for the most part, I'm done with the actual theory, but I know you have a lot of questions probably. So if you guys want, go ahead and start questioning me and then I'll try to, um, you know, answer those questions as, you know, as thoroughly as possible. Real name with nickname, what's better or just a personal choice? Um, well, again, if your nickname, again, if your, if your name is like something, something, blah, 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 or something. And I'm, and I'm not trying to say that Polish names are bad, <laughs> uh, but with, 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 say with Polish names and at least pronounceable. Right. And then let's say that there's Jama Jurabayev, which from on the surface shouldn't be pronounceable. So it depends. Again, you just need to Google your, your name. So maybe you don't have enough posts, so it's not Googleable yet. So maybe you're going to, you know, tag your name a bunch of times and that's what's going to be present. Um, I think one thing that I want to also keep in mind, guys, that when you are developing your portfolio, right, even if you don't have industry experience, so for example, I had my Lumber Saga project and then it's really hard to have portfolio pieces that you've done for work. So, you know, the saying fake it until you make it. A lot of very successful artists uh, have a project that they work on to show that they work on something. And you don't have to tell that this project is only for you and it's a personal project. 
but it really helps to have your own personal story that you can apply your knowledge to. Because what I see a lot of the times on bad portfolios, it's you can see that the person is a student and doesn't have a creative voice, a unique voice. All they're doing is assignments and then reproducing what's popular on our station. So it's really important to have your own personal project, not only to show that you worked on something can be consistent, but also when you're starting out to have a context where to apply all of your knowledge to. Because for example, when I started doing Lumber Saga and I was very excited about it, in the beginning I was a little bit lost, but then I had so many ideas, every time I would learn a new fundamental, like perspective or texturing or different lighting, I could come up with a scenario in my own universe and how it would apply to the next painting I would do for this project. So I really, really recommend you start your own project and technically you already did. You already did. This project that you started on, on this camp, on Valhalla for Artists camp, you basically started or kickstarted your own universe. And that was my intention. So now you can either expand it, you know, or you can learn what you learned on the lectures and then start a new one, right? But I really, really recommend you just, you know, be project based. So for example, for me, Lumber Saga, all of, you know, in the context of Lumber Saga, I'm thinking about keyframes and then Lumber Saga, you know, characters, cool. You know, I always, when I don't know what to paint or what to put in my portfolio, I always have the universe that you can pull th from. And then as you can see, you never know where you're gonna go because the thing is, let's say Evan Amundsen or someone else, they are known for their personal projects and that's how they get discovered. It's like, oh, you're this guy who does Vikings and sci-fi all the time. Yeah, it's Lumber Saga, it's Misha Oplov, right? Uh, Evan Abundson, this thing, you know, uh, you know, another, another guy, like a comic book or something. So that's why it's really nice to have projects for your portfolio because you're not only going to have, going to be passionate about what you do and then post, but you're also over time going to discover what you like in your project the most. So like, I like mood and atmosphere and color, right? It doesn't matter what I do, keyframe or anything else. I still have it and people hire me for color scripting, you know, and mood and my color choices type of a deal, right? For you, it could be different things. So for example, if you have your own personal project, you might do color, you might do design, but you know, maybe your line work and designing is through the roof, through your project. Let's say it's gonna be like fish, cyborgs, fighting worms on the moon. I don't know, right? But then what's gonna stand out for your client or potential HR, it's gonna be what? It's gonna be your design choices. So that's why it's really important to have a project, a personal, per Chanel project in the beginning of all of this. So it's somewhere over here. Why? Because if you have a project, you're not gonna only still know what to put in your portfolio because you're gonna be like, well, I know what my creative voice is and I'm gonna create a project or for myself that I fit into. And then you're gonna learn a lot because every time you're gonna tackle a new thing, it will be character design or anything. You always have your project to have, again, to start it in it. And then when people will look at your portfolio, they'll be like, wow, they worked on this thing and it looks super cool. You don't have to let any client know that it's not a real project. See, that's the thing. When you are even working for free for somebody or for yourself, it is already kind of experience. That's another thing like, you know, working for free sucks, but sometimes when you find a very interesting universe and you can be part of it, like for example, people are helping me with Lumber Saga, even if you don't get paid, but if you get the industry experience, I know it's a, it's a great road, everyone should be paid. But at the same time, sometimes experience is much more better than actually a paid gig because on a paid gig you can just do like a DD, I don't know, thingamajig map and then you're like you're like like a color key artist and it's absolutely useless. You still got money, but you're gonna experience in the wrong thing. So if you see somewhere you can get experience and you can actually put this on your resume in your portfolio, in the beginning, you know, it's really, really good looking on your uh, art station portfolio because people can see that you particip participate in the projects. But 
for the most part, I think do your own project, right? Uh, because the only thing that's going to change is then you're going to get paid for your work. But you have to simulate when you are doing your portfolio, you have to be like, hey, I need an art director. You're yourself an art director. You can actually come up to a person and say, hey, man, I really need like some context. Can you be my art director? And then I will do the project for you, for example. So your job is to, for your portfolio, is to prepare yourself to real world scenarios, right? And then when, if, you, if you survive through this art camp, Technically, you already went through a real pipeline because you listened to directors, character designers, you know the pipeline now. And then what you did, you developed a full package for a full world. The only thing that you need to specialize yourself is just go and then crank 500% each of the step. Would it be keyframes, environments, or characters, right? So yeah, it's called fake it until you make it. And the only thing that's going to change for you, you're going to start getting paid and that's where you're going to get your comfort confidence from because if you're going to do your own project on your own time when people are going to ask you have you ever worked in the industry on real project you're going to say yes i did and it's not lying you did work on the real project you did uh, work on the real solutions for that project and you do have the experience right versus if you're just gonna mimic someone else and then just do what's trending on our station that's that's gonna be not of value, right? Um, yeah. What else did I want to talk about today? Our station and portfolio related. Oh. Okay. Just let's recap one more time, so we understand everything clearly. So we know who we are as artists. We know what we do. We know what we're good at and we know what our artistic voice is. Now we build bridges, right? This is us. Now we start building bridges for people to discover us. Our role is to convince them that what we do is awesome and what we do fits their pipeline. To make ourselves discoverable, we use social media, hashtag, Instagrams, everything else, right? And then when we get a chance, we also abuse a trending page for more visibility. But most thing that we need to focus on is that our portfolio is who we are. So when we get hired, we hired for our creative voice. We figure out a niche by drawing a lot. And that's how we find that this is the thing that we're good at. And then we use every possibility to get into HR's faces to explain that first of all, we're really good. And secondly, and secondly, we need to show them how we think. So when they see all of that, they can hire us. Portfolio is not a place for your ego. ArtStation is not a social media to gain followers. I'm going to tell you this, guys. Followers don't matter on ArtStation. What's it like? Like this number is absolutely useless. Like it doesn't give me more jobs, less jobs, maybe more visibility for art camp here and there. Right? But for the most part, numbers are not important. I know a lot of, you know, uh, artists who work for AA or EA and then for, you know, Netflix animations, they have like 10 to 15 to 100 followers. Right, because our station is a place where we get discovered and we will hold our portfolio and we don't need to be discovered by useless numbers. We need to discover we need to be discovered by one person. It could be an HR or an art director or a director. Doesn't matter. We're not pleasing this crowd. No, no, no. We're not pleasing this crowd. Unless you're a self employed artist who need to build, you know, an audience, for example. Right? There's better platforms, YouTube, Instagram, all of that. Uh, Art station is for artists and then for recruiters. All we have to do is to impress only one person. That's an HR or an art director. Because if we do that, we'll get a job. We can have 20K of just other artists. They're not going to pay us money. We're not, we'll be able to survive. You cannot eat or sell 20,000 subscribers. Unless, you know, maybe you will be selling like a brush pack or something else. That's a whole nother field. Self-employed artist and then, 
you know, uh, social media and then your audience is a whole nother thing. Uh, we might, if you want, we can cover it a little bit how, but honestly, it's a whole another industry. If we're talking about visual development and then an entertainment industry in general, that's how it works. We just impress one person and that one person gives us job. And then we need to prove to this one person that we're worthy. And that one person can recommend us to another person, another person, right? And our, our station portfolio is going to be more and more with other projects. We get more and more on other radars. And then over time, your portfolio can be whatever the hell you want. Because you have so many connections, you don't even need our station anymore. For example, Toby Trebelha, who's been working for the last like 15 plus years, doesn't even have an our station portfolio, <laughs> right? He knows so many people in the industry that he doesn't do social media whatsoever. Why? Because he was discovered once or twice by one person. And then through, you know, through networking and through the word of mouth, even on an art station page, he got more work. Again, our jobs as artists is to not impress millions. We need to impress one person and this one person give, can give us job. I think for the most part, yeah, that's it. But just one more thing. Please, 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 please focus on your own creative voice and then see where you fit in the industry. Because this way you might be might, much more happier. Right, because you're not gonna be on, stuck on the job that tells you what to do and you don't like doing it. You know, this is controversial because we are part of the cog, but I say life's gonna be much, much more happier if you invest into yourself first, into your creative voice, and then you get discovered. And it's an amazing feeling when you are treated uh, well, and then when you, you are valued, and then you're hired for who you are and what you do, because you are being the best, you know, at being you. And that's the best feeling, honestly. Uh, versus then you like, you analyze, you can, you can be very, you know, calculated about it. You can analyze the industry, see what's the most paying job is, and then go and then go for that most paying job. And then just do that because you don't care about the creative voice. You only care about just making lots of money with the creative thing. And that's okay. That's who you are. But for example, for me, that's not who I am. I need to have a specific narrative, a specific like style for the project. I need to have a specific team around me because that's what makes me happy. You know, and we're in control of doing that because I think it's better to, you know, work at McDonald's than and, and then have your creative juices intact and then just invest five years of your time into your art station and your portfolio and build those connections and work as you. Versus then sell your soul to the devil and then start working tomorrow, but you're going to be stuck in that work that is creative. You're going to be draining you creatively and then you're going to be dead as a creative afterward. Because the sad thing is our industry sometimes is the most uncreative place ever. That's why people get burned out. Um, and that's usually because they end up in a place, not because they wanted to be there, but because of fear or money or anything else. And then they didn't follow their creative voice. Um, yeah, I know some, 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 for some people, a paying job is enough, but can I tell you guys, we get used to a lot of things really, really fast. And then if a job that you hate, why go into a creative field and then start hating what you love? That's the creative hell. It's better to be on a high paying job that you hate, but that is not creative and not work in the creative field and then have the time for your own art and then keep it sacred and not pollute it, right? Then agreeing for less and then just having a uh, creative just Because again, guys, this kind of goes into a healthy mind of an artist. A successful artist, I think, is not an artist that gets paid for what they do. It's not an artist who has a lot of followers. It's not an artist who has like all the cool new technology and all of that. It's an artist who is comfortable for who they are, right? It's an artist who knows who they are, what they stand for, and who has a personal connection with their creation and with their, with their artwork. And they're happy just being in the present doodling in fo their Photoshop file and everything else is a side effect of their love of what they do. That is a definition of a successful artist, in my opinion. Everything comes and goes, you know, 
tomorrow, you know, you can get fired from your job. Are you not successful artist anymore? In some people's eyes, yes. But in my opinion, you know, you know, take the equivalent, like let's say money doesn't exist tomorrow and say companies don't exist any, anymore tomorrow. And then tomorrow you'll wake up, you have food, you have the roof over your head. And the only thing is like, the only question is, what are you going to do, right? Will you still do what you're doing? Are you still going to be painting, creating stories, you know? And that has to be the definition of success. If you are creating day to day, and then you are, you know, you're fighting the resistance and fighting the, you know, <laughs> because creating is hard. And if, if, and if you do create every day, you, you're winning. It doesn't matter if you get paid for it. It doesn't matter if you get acknowledged for that or people appreciate what you do. You're doing it because it's like breathing. That is the life of a successful artist. And then everything else is a nice side effect. So that's what you need to be focusing on. Right. And then if you add a little bit of, again, analytical thinking, and then you are the best at the, you're the best at what you do, right? Slowly you can incorporate those algorithms and techniques that I talked about today and get yourself more noticed. And that's going to lead to more money and more notoriety or subscribers. But if you're going to focus on subscribers and everything else, you're going to be the most unhappy person. Because subscribers come and go, money comes and go. And if you're going to focus on that, it's, it will be impossible to sustain your art career. That's why you need to focus on, on the love and the present of painting. And then everything else will come as a side effect. Yeah. Uh, all right. I think that's it for today in terms of theory. Because I'm coming, I'll, I'll, I'll be going in circles pretty, pretty soon. And I don't want to do that. Hopefully this was useful. Time for questions and answers. And also we're going to have a Q&A session afterwards. Uh, so yeah, don't miss that. So, all right. So please, if you have a question, put a giant Q or the word question uh, in the beginning of your question. And I'm going to be talking about it. Um, yeah. You're welcome, guys. I'm not sure if you heard about those concepts or not. I, I brushed over a lot of things. Um, yeah, but hopefully now you have a little bit more guidance of what our station is for and what to do there. And also, and honestly, this concept can be applied to any platform. So if Instagram, your main platform, you can do the same thing there. If YouTube is your main platform, it's, it's basically talking like, who is my audience? How can I get discovered? And that's all about building bridges, right? All right, questions and answers time. Question, when is the new challenge gonna start again? I missed the Viking one. Uh, man, people already want a next challenge. Well, again, focus on this one, on finishing this challenge. And uh, there's gonna be a lot of things that we're gonna do on our thing. So, for example, right now we're planning a series. It's called Winter Wars, when me and C are going to go into the woods and do a bunch of creature design stuff. It's going to be a challenge for everyone. It's going to be probably like a course. Then I want to do an environment week. And then I want to do a storyboarding, or not, um, environment month and a storyboarding month or two months, somewhere in spring. So there's a lot of things in plan. You know, one thing that I'm going to tell you guys is um, don't miss Q&A sessions. Because a lot of the times what we do is we start brainstorming as a community. Like last time we were discussing Patreon ideas for Valhalla for Artists uh, education channel here on YouTube, right? What are we going to offer on the Patreon? And then that thing led to what do we want to do in terms of a YouTube series? What, what kind of lessons do we want? So, uh, guys, I created a, a community for this one sole purpose is I am... I am a guy who creates stuff for you, but you are telling me what is relevant and then together we can come up with something exciting and awesome. So and another thing is don't look up to me in terms of like Misha, what's going on. Sometimes you can have, you know, take charge and say, this is an awesome idea. I want to do it. And then you can just DM me. What if we do this? And if it's an awesome idea and you're going to pull through and you're going to organize everything, I can, I can say, I bless you, do the thing, organize. Use 
use the platform as you want, because the thing is, our platform is not for me to, you know, stroke my ego and say, hey, this is my Lumber Saga project. It's part of it, right? But again, I am, I'm just, you know, it's a democracy. Yes, maybe I'm sitting on the throne, but all of you guys, if you're going to rebel, you know, you're going to rebel and do your own thing. So it's, it's, all, it's always a conversation, okay? So let's talk about it. And then if you have some kind of ideas, we can implement them. Right, what's the most ideal content you would want to see in a VizDev portfolio? Uh, again, story is king. In the VizDev portfolio, I want to show, I want to see context. What's the context of the story? What's the emotions? And then how you are using the fundamentals like design, it could be character, environment, keyframe. Again, VizDev is an umbrella that shows a lot of things. Some people do all of them, like environments and, and all of that stuff and characters. But sometimes this dev portfolio is only about characters, only about an environment. So the main thing for me, at least, when I look at someone's portfolio, is story is king. Do I feel anything when I look at that portfolio? And of course, the portfolio has to look good in terms of industry standard. And to get an industry standard, you need to compare yourself all the time and see where you're in a totem pole. So and if you're the only thing that you need to be, guys, to get hired, you need to be slightly above average. So for example, my artwork is slightly above average, honestly, in terms of execution. Maybe the quality of ideas is more than average. I don't know, you'll be the judge, right? But in terms of execution, you need to be slightly above average of the industry standard to stand out. And it's not that hard. You just need to push a little bit further, right? Yeah, so story, competitive skill in terms of like picture making, but quality of idea, and then, you know, how your designs or things that you do look in the context of the story because a lot of the times just pretty image doesn't make it you know i've been talking to joel a lot and he's been hiring a lot of people not hiring a lot of people and then in my experience when i was art directing or directing or something like that i, I would have to choose a person or even choose a person for my lumber saga project and a lot of the times a person can do a really good picture but then when they are put in the concept of a project, they cannot adapt. So another thing is adaptivity uh, of different styles or projects. So that's why I say have ideally have 10 projects that may be slightly different uh, setting or slightly different style maybe to show that you can be adaptive. Um, yeah, of course there's probably many more, but those are the things that can come up from the top of my brain. All right. Uh, can you show that storyboard artist one more time? Okay, let's see. Ji Kang Lim, we worked on the same projects on Apex Legends. I think it's either this one that we worked on. No, I think we worked on this one together. One of those. Yeah, we worked on this. Uh, there was actually two storyboard artists. One was Paul, another one was Ji. Yeah, and then I worked with him on, on this. So as you can see, he has a little bit of visual development, but he's a story artist and a little bit of that. So, but I think he, I think he, mo the most he works as a storyboard artist, but um, yeah, here's the guy, Jin Kang Lim, you can Google him. All right. All right. Can you show it? Blah, 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 blah. Low tables, but to die. So I'll miss out the Q&A on Discord, but yeah, they definitely did that. Me think of creativity, a whole on project just to create content to post. Yeah. How do I present storyboard compared to keyframes? What would be the difference? Boris, you don't have to worry about this right now. You have zero storyboards. <laughs> um, but usually for storyboards, you have an animatic or you have a giant spreadsheet like, like this posted and that's it but usually animatics are better because it's usually easier to press play and then see a slideshow than individually pay attention to each board. Uh, of course, to show how other people do, do, do your research. So for example, storyboarding, uh, whoops, art station. There's a lot of like, um, really good storyboard artist on our station. One of my favorites is this guy who does stuff for League of Legends. And, you know, he posts things like that, for example. So, yeah, but Boris, you don't have to think about it yet because you're not a storyboard artist or anything else. You have nothing to post yet. Uh, but if you have any questions, do your own research most of the time. There's a search bar on our station. 
Uh, all right. Real name is nickname. What better? Or is just a person's choice? Question two, what is your signature in art? My signature in art always, always changed. When I was a child, I had a snot. <laughs> that was my graffiti. That was my, uh, that was my graffiti signature when I was a child. Then it went to Mishma. And that was interesting. It had three crosses in it like this. Um, and then the other time, and then now I don't, I don't, I don't have a signature. Like I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to show my actual signature. So you cannot like, so the internet doesn't have my actual signature for <laughs> bank stuff or anything. But for example, on my, on actual artwork, I'll just, I'll just probably just do Misha. Misha, you know, Opliff, that's it. Very unoriginal, but I don't like any, anything fancy. Um, yeah, Mishma is a whole another thing. So I might do Mishma sometimes um, because the story behind Mishma is that I was in a, in a Christian school in California a long, long time ago. And the guy said, Mishma, that's your name? I'm like, sure, because that's better than Mickey <laughs> that people called me. Uh, yeah. Joe's, Joe says that his name is Spat. That's cool. Uh, all right, so yeah, real name was nickname, doesn't matter. Again, see if you can discoverable. Maybe you can make your real name, you know, as popular as possible, or you can say Husky and then in, in quotes, you can have real name, for example. Um, yeah. Can we do a Burrito Warrior character design week? Oh man, but I have to participate. I'm pretty tired right now, so probably not for another month or so. It's almost the end of the camp. Any plans for burrito warrior? Oh, again. Uh, when I when I rest, yeah, it's gonna be an epic week of burrito warrior concepts. Do you have experience with the art test? I have a very bad one. In my opinion, usually when a company needs to have an art test for you and it's unpaid, double check if the company is good. Uh, usually the art test has to be paid or you have a trial period. But for the most part, in my experience, I've never done an art test in my life. Like never. Usually when I get hired, I get hired. And then if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Um, yeah, I, I never usually agree to art tests because a lot of companies will abuse you and will, you'll actually do, you'll sign an NDA, you actually do part of the work. And a lot of companies do a pretty crappy thing. They, they basically use your art test and then don't hire you so they don't have to pay you anymore so usually if it's not a very well-known company and they ask you for an art test you know uh do it your own you know some like if you don't get if you don't care about being paid and all you want is just experience you know but i don't know it's better to work for your own project for free than work for some other person's project for free um, yeah, but my own experience, art test is a common thing because you have to understand, always place your shoes in other people's, uh, or always place yourself in other people's shoes. So if you have an indie developer who, and you have like three portfolio pieces that doesn't show if you can do the thing that you don't, it's logical that another person will put you through an art test, but hopefully a paid one. But if it's not discussed that it's a paid one, at least say like double check or sign something. I don't know, but usually an artist should be paid because you're going to be working for them. If it's unpaid, you really want to, if you, if you really want to get in, in the company, the company has to be great for you to do a free art test. Um, yeah. You mentioned we should stick to one category for now, hypothetically, if we have character design project, but then we have an environment design project. Shall we not post one of them? Um, honestly, if you're just starting out and you don't care about your portfolio, post everything, you know, you can post everything onto our stage. It doesn't matter. You know, if someone discovers you cool, you can test out what you're good at, especially in the beginning. You have to be jack of all trades in the beginning because you're testing this, this and that, but over like, that's why you need to start kind of when you're just starting in your art career and trying to figure out what you're good at. Right. What you need to do is you need to start wide, you know, and then you, you need to narrow down your skill into something one and be that your, you know, that that's the king of you, 
you know you can have little things that branch out but again like this is your environments and this is your characters you should have 80% of the environments and then maybe like a little bit 20% of your characters it doesn't mean you shouldn't post it but the thing is if you're in your portfolio you're gonna have a character a prop and then you're gonna have an environment you know and they're all kind of mediocre the HR is gonna look at it and be kind of like you know kind of like it's kind of like what Like, like, where do I hire this person? Right? Like, I don't know. So that's why it's really important that like if your portfolio needs to have a simple statement, and that simple statement has to be readable. And then the other things are like, for example, for me, color and light. Doesn't matter what I do. Environments, characters. I have color and light. For some people, it's going to be environment design. For some people, it's going to be characters. Think about what's my simple statement of my portfolio that can be hired for. And then if you need to diversify into something else, you know, then advertise it. Say, I do this, this, and that. But usually, you get hired for this one thing that you're good at, that you're king at. And then people discover you can do another thing. And then you can diversify and people can give you mini tasks. So for example, with me, I know how to do color keys. And that was what I was get hired for, for Clash of Clans all the time. But then they discovered I can do the keyframes and I can do a little bit of design. And then uh, on the previous few last jobs, I did keyframes and I, need, and, and, and I did design for their like props here and there because they needed a the person. And that's not what I usually do. But then I said, yeah, sure, why not? Because I can fill in the shoes. But that's another thing is, guys, you need to know who you're really, what you're really good at and then say no to some jobs that basically say, can you do this? Because your responsibility before the industry is to, well, not take jobs that, you know, that are not yours because you're going to be agreeing to them only because, well, you want money, but everyone should be on the right place and do what you're the, they're best at and what they love. So I love doing color keys. And if another person does environments and if they ask to do color keys, maybe they can you know, say yes because they want to, but if it's a triple A job and they know they won't do a good job, their responsibility is to recommend another guy. And then when I'm doing color keys and I'm said, you need to do environments, I'm like, I don't think I'm the right person for this. You need to be honest. Like, I think I had an interview. It was either for Universal or I'm not sure who it was or it was Sony or I don't remember. But then they had some kind of, uh, I think it was Raya, the, the Dragon Project a long time ago. And they asked me, will you do a bunch of like, Japanese design stuff. And do you like designing houses in this style? And I said, honestly, if I were you, I would not hire me. I would only hire myself for keyframes, color keys, and anything mood related. And they said, thank you, we'll give you a call. And of course they went with another person because I basically self-sabotaged myself. But the thing is, if you're gonna be honest with yourself, going from point A to point B, and you're gonna say no to jobs, you're gonna ascend your mountain of your career faster because you know what you're doing, you know what you're best at. And usually if you know what you're best at, that's what you get paid most for, right? So yeah, let me see what other questions are out there. Sorry, I'm missing them a little bit. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. How do I understand average you earn? Okay, cool. Bu -bu 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 -bu. How do I present storyboarding? Blah, blah, blah. That's why I'm working on storytelling plus good quality art, good. It's almost the end of the camp, blah, blah, blah. Do you have the experience with our test? How understand average your, how to understand average you're on the, or if you are on the bottom? Um, well, download all the pictures of people who work on projects that you like, and then just put your picture next to them and see if it holds up. And if it holds up, you are, or if it's slightly worse, you're like average or slightly average because they're great, right? So yeah, just have a big visual library of things in context. Um, yeah. Question, you mentioned we should stick to one category for now. Okay, I already asked that. Question, how are you resting enough? <laughs> uh, nope. And yes, at the same time, yesterday I went on a, on the river, flew my drone around. A good art director will fight for testers to get paid. Yeah, see, J Joe is an art director and he knows. So, yeah, uh, Joe usually pays for his um, art test. 
I had an art test, took me two weeks to go through three tasks. I was exhausted, but then I made the company told me they weren't interested and I couldn't talk about it ever again. Yep. Right. Boo, 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 doo, doo, doo. Okay, any more questions? There's a bunch of, okay, question, follow-up question. If my simple statement is for character design, is it safe to make a polished keyframe or illustration of the character for thumbnail? Or would that divert from character design? Well, if your main statement is, is character design, and then your keyframe has a character on it with a little bit of environment, you're emphasizing still a character, but you're also telling that you're not also a character designer, but you are a good character presenter or character illustrator in your keyframe. And you might get hired for like Riot Games stuff, right? Uh, all right, cool. So I think the most questions are done. Um, I think this will be it for tonight, unless we're going to have any more stuff in the main channel. I think we should just jump in into Q&A session right, right away. So yeah, guys, the bottom line is follow your creative voice. That's going to dictate your portfolio and the soul in your portfolio. Because another thing that I forgot to mention is there's such a thing as art station look and things look the same. Your responsibility is to impress an HR and show that you're kind of the same, but different. That your portfolio has a soul. And then to make your portfolio have a soul, you need to have a nice story. You need to know who you are, what you stand for. And that's your creative voice. Because I will tell you, creative voices, original creative voices do stand out from the army of recycled art. You know, in the beginning, recycled art was original, but then people picked it up. So your responsibility is to invest into your creative voice and that's going to be your selling point. And if you're going to be the best version of yourself, that's the ultimate goal as an artist is to be hired for who they are. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't mean, doesn't mean that you are not adaptable. But for the most part, you're valued for who you are, right? And over time, with algorithms and all of that, you'll find a way how to be noticed. But pay attention to one thing. It's yourself in the present painting and being happy about it because that's going to lead to all the awesome things in the future. Um, and yeah, stay hydrated. You're the best Vikings I've ever known. Join the Q&A session afterwards. Like and subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Um, yeah, if you guys have any more questions for people who are part, who are listening to this in the recording, maybe drop your question in the comment section. Maybe we all get the time to uh, answer it. But yeah, for the most part, uh, join the Q&A session. Uh, and uh, yeah, goodbye.